Hey everyone, Brian with the Hobby Farm Guys here. Each week we put out a video in which we turn the spotlight on a particular breed of hobby farm animal. We cover a short history of the breed as well as information helpful to know and understand if you're thinking of keeping that breed. Chickens are our most requested spotlights and over the past few years we've published videos on some 75 different chicken breeds. So if you're looking for your perfect chicken match, our Chicken Breed Spotlight playlist is a good place to start looking. Today, I'm going to introduce you to perhaps one of the rarest chicken breeds on the planet. A beautiful bird, the Marsh Daisy, is rare in its homeland of England and nearly non-existent everywhere else. However, there's a dedicated group working with this breed who are looking for breeders interested in helping bring this breed back from the edge of extinction. And once you've watched the video, You'll understand why this is a breed worth saving. They're pretty awesome birds. Let's get to it. Along the western shore of England, neighboring the Irish Sea, lie the districts of Lancashire and Merseyside. The area is a low-lying coastal plain, much of it reclaimed marshland, although pockets of marshland still exist. Here in a small town outside of Southport, the Marsh Daisy chicken breed story begins. Mr. J. Wright began working on the breed in the 1880s. Originally, he crossed a bantam Old English gamecock with cinnamon melee hens and then mated the resulting male offspring of this cross to female offspring he created from a crossing of black Hamburgs and white leghorns. He then selected a white rosecomb cock from this mating and crossed it back to the hens from the Hamburg leghorn cross. He worked with the breed for over 30 years, developing partridge, white, and wheaten color varieties, but the breed was never really promoted or distributed. By 1913, there weren't many of the birds left, and then a Mr. Charles Moore took note of the hens wandering Mr. Wright's land. He noted that the ground they ranged over was a veritable marshy swamp in winter, and yet the birds continued to lay when no one else's birds were producing eggs. It's believed that this is how the breed came to be known by the name Marsh Daisy. He took a couple of the remaining hens and crossed them with a pit game rooster. Then by breeding the sons of this pairing back to the hens and introducing Sicilian buttercup genes as well, he revived the breed and introduced beautiful, consistent, willow green legs. He also added a buff color variety. By 1921, the Marsh Daisy Club was born and the breed was shown to the public. A year later, the breed standard was accepted into the poultry club of Great Britain. Black and brown color varieties were also developed, but the breed never gained a wide following and over the next 50 years just about disappeared completely. A flock was discovered in Somerset in the 1970s where it was thriving. The original white color variety had become extinct, but a small number of buffs, browns, and wheatons were discovered along with a single black hen. A few other flocks were located in Essex, Cambridge, Somerset, and Cheshire. Birds from these five flocks form the basis of the breed today. In a nice surprise, the white variety, thought extinct, has re-emerged from a recessive gene in existing stock. It still needs work to remove a recurring tint, but its hidden survival means the color won't have to be redeveloped from scratch. Currently, the black variety is nearly extinct. The marsh daisy has never had any populations of consequence outside of England and is considered rare even in its homeland. The breed is listed as an endangered breed by the Rare Breeds Survival Trust of the United Kingdom. Similar in build to the game birds, they're classified as a lightweight breed of standard fowl, with males weighing 6 to 7 pounds and the females weighing 5 to 6 pounds. Once found in black, brown, buff, wheaten, and white color varieties, the wheaten and brown are the most common today, although the buff, white, and black color variations have been reintroduced by dedicated breeders. In the most commonly seen Wheaton variety, the plumage of the male is gold turning to red, then black towards the tail, which has black sickles with a beetle green sheen. 
The female is wheaten with neck hackles, which are chestnut edged with black. The birds have a large, bright red rose comb, white earlobes, willow green legs, and horn colored toenails. The tail is held about 45 degrees and the breast is nicely rounded. There is no bantam version of this breed. Marsh daisy hens are reliable layers of 160 to 210 tinted eggs each year, and they lay well into the winter. They also tend to be productive longer, laying as many eggs in years three and four as they did in year one. The breed also makes an excellent table bird with well-flavored flesh. The marsh daisy is a hardy, economical bird, well-suited to free-ranging. As such, they make excellent foragers. They don't mind the rain, and the breed was developed on swampy and marshy ground. That being said, the old adage of, if you want a bird for swampy ground, get a duck, is probably worth remembering. But the marsh daisy is far more tolerant of soggy conditions than other chicken breeds. A good brooder, marsh daisies can also be used to create sex-linked chicks. A marsh daisy rooster mated to a light Sussex hen produces brown pullets and white cockerels. They're long-lived birds, but due to interbreeding over the years, males may have heart problems and some never reach more than three years of age. This is also a breed that is slower to mature than other breeds of its size. Active, the birds are decent flyers as well. Roosters of this breed are known to be non-aggressive. That's what we were able to learn about the marsh daisy chicken breed. Beautiful birds, Inbreeding remains an issue due to limited numbers as this historic breed is brought back from the edge of extinction. Perhaps not the breed for casual backyard flock keepers. This is a wonderful breed that could use more dedicated breeders to help get it reestablished. I hope you learned a little something about the breed and I hope you had a good time doing it. If so, please take just a second and smash that like button for me. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, why not remedy that right now as well? It's free. And until next time, everyone, keep on hobby farming.